Okay, first things first, put on your gloves unless skin irritation is your kind of thing. Get out your backpack sprayer, see how much product that you got in the reservoir. As a rule of thumb, you don't want to have more in your sprayer than you're using at the current job. But if you have a lot more sprays to do that day, or maybe you're using that product again in that same sprayer, it's okay to fill up with more than you need right now. But you want to empty your sprayer by the end of the day. You do not want products sitting in your sprayer overnight. This can clog up the internals of your sprayer. Speaking of that, let's fill your backpack now. You want to make sure your backpack sprayer has the filter inside of it when you fill up. The smallest piece of debris can clog your backpack sprayer. As you can see, a lot of debris comes out of the faucet too. You want to keep running the faucet until the water comes out clear and fresh. So today I have three gallons of finished product in the backpack. I want four gallons total of finished product. That means I'm going to add 0.75 of suspend polyzone concentrate. I'm gonna to top that off with one gallon of fresh water as well. This is gonna give me four gallons total of finished product at the dilution that I like. I also like to add the concentrate on top of the filter and then add the water on top of that. This rinses the concentrate into the backpack from the top down. Looks like I'm still about a half a gallon short, so I'm gonna fill up. Four gallons, good to go. When doing a foundation treatment, you only want to go two feet up and up to two feet out or more in soil areas like this, non-impervious areas. You do not want to do this in impervious areas like concrete areas, driveways, sidewalks, patios, etc. This is due to runoff risk. This is a violation. You want to do crack and crevice say along expansion joints and things like that in impervious areas. Time to power spray. It's probably a good idea to take a walk around the house, see if there's anything that you need to move away, anything that you wouldn't want sprayed at your house, right? Think about it. You also want to ask the customer about edible plants and such. Pick a spot. I like to go left to right when I'm spraying at a medium height. I like to get things done in one pass. Here I'm going along the eave and around the windows, one section at a time, but still in one pass. You wanna stay at about three to five inches around the border of the windows, so you don't spray the glass. Still moving along one section at a time, but simultaneously doing the windows and the eave. Watch out for people. It happens a lot. It's like they want a chemical shower or something. Okay, we're on the high side now. Two security cameras here. You definitely want to watch for people walking around. All the other things we previously mentioned. You want to have the full jet stream, the highest pressure, and you want to be really tight in the crease of the eave. You also want to make sure that you get that peak that extends out really good. It's also getting that light housing above that wasps like to make nests in as well. Once again, stay three to five inches outside the windows. You don't want to get anything on the glass.
All right, good to go. Ah, the feeling of success. Who's next? <laughs>